like gut feeling that I get where I just like have this internal monologue half the time I swear anybody that shares a studio with me probably thinks I'm having full-fledged conversations with myself I do feel like it's very important and so when I got this piece I was like no it has to be like this and I I've always I'm still trying to figure out why that is the way it is or if it's just the way I approach things of like this mending understanding repairing taking things apart putting it back together and having like clever constructions and I take pride in forging down bits and pieces to intersect planes and then put things back together with this mechanical but yet very soft. I wanted to show that a little bit of a difference. My name is Sulo. My pronouns are they, them. I am a trans, non-binary, interdisciplinary maker and printmaker, metalsmith. So in metalsmithing, contemporary jewelry is like a big, big part of um, our field. And I never really meant to get into it. It wasn't something that I was like, yeah, I'm going to be a jeweler. And then when you think of jeweler, you think of diamond rings, you think of fashion and small things. And there's this whole other like niche of like making called art jewelry or contemporary jewelry. And you'll see crazy work that is just phenomenal in scale, size, and inspiration. And so I kind of fell into that. But I fell in love with it. And it was almost I had this like relationship with this material that from a past life and it all just made sense and I was just really good at it and I it made sense to me it was like I don't know it just everything fell into place when I was working with this material and um, I also want to introduce you um, introduce to you my bookmaking process um, this is something that is a very visceral and important part of my practice and before that I cataloged my journal like my thoughts and things in a smaller journal but I really embodied walking into my surroundings and picking up trash and treasures and becoming really involved in my surroundings more than just like occupying space. And so I found things that basically what other people would consider trash, but I brought them into my own personal narrative, into my own story, things that I've been through, the things that I've witnessed. And somehow, like I said, out of all of it, I was able to tell my story. Um, and often these book pages contain very painful memories or places that I've been to. Um, things that are very difficult for me to explain verbally and that's the main thing with my work is explaining what I feel is incommunicable. Many of the things I wrote were things that were said to me by others, um, things that I had witnessed and other hardships and it was a way for me to catalog my grief and my identity and make room for forgiveness for myself and I take everything very very seriously when it comes to making so there is no in-between for me uh, when it comes to my practice and so in here I realized the power my voice had in multiplicity and taking up space and embodying a space more than just putting something on a pedestal or nailing a piece on the wall seeing my voice take up this space in the way others reacted to it um, it was it was overwhelming it was this maximalism that I felt existed within my work via color and surface treatment, but seeing it this way, it just changed everything for me. And also I saw the power of my personal aesthetics coming through here in a way that I felt that I had kind of like tucked away in a box or into a book. Like, you know, like I said before, I made these book pages and they were just bound in a book, but here I saw them on the wall. Um, a lot of the imagery that you're gonna see with my work it's all influenced by anime, action figures, Pokemon. Um, you'll see the walls of the gallery. A lot of it is blind contour drawings of Pokemon characters that I combined with the visual language that I have built into a substantial database of things that I pull from. And also an integral part of my practice is recycling. I make a lot of things, so I'll have a lot of things out on my table. You'll see scrap buckets um, on my bench. They're just everywhere. And I sometimes, if something doesn't work one place, I might take it and put it with another piece, or some other piece might fail, and I'll put it together with another piece. So my thesis work started to develop into a space of focusing on a strong tone of repairing and mending the relationship I had with myself and this struggle of identity and gender and not wanting to specifically talk about trauma. I didn't want my work to be this trauma bonding experience or anything like that. And also I felt that there was this significant separation of like seeing my work as this like exterior moment for me where it's bright, it's fun, it's colorful, but then the writing is also very sad and sorrowful. And so I'm just thinking about like, what is this? And it was this in-between space for me. And so I wanted to investigate that in-between space and how to position myself within that space. And I felt that there was a responsibility that I had to imbue that space with magic and with this world that I started to develop called Sparkle Filth Cloud Nine. And um, basically thinking, 
how my identity evolves and there's different versions of myself that join me as I'm inserted into certain spaces both in that in-between space and in spaces like this or in the general public. How do I operate as a queer trans body that does not pass in certain places but does in here and also these feelings of not being queer enough and this living in a body pre-top surgery um, and struggling significantly with that. I focus more on how together with my former selves and these feelings and using my creative practice to build objects and spaces that maintained a sense of equilibrium and maintained that sense of sparkle filled cloud nine. Um, it was something that was sort of like a manifestation of homeostasis, if that makes sense. And I knew that with this body of work, I could exist safely in the world when this, play, when this work existed. And this piece right here is a blind contour drawing of Hello Kitty mixed with cinema roll and um, some other Pokemon, I think, that has a tree coming out of its head, but I can't remember which one. <laughs> and so this is when I really started leaning into that necklace format even more. But this was allowing that asymmetrical nature, allowing two separate conversations to happen on the same piece, yet feeding each other in this cyclical moment. And that's sort of how I saw the necklace. It was this ellipse format. It fed back into itself. I want to leave you with asking yourself, what is your why? And think about your practice, whether your medium is metalsmithing or if it's ceramics or if it's graphic design or anything, I think that um, your voice will come through in all those things. And it's a winding path through mountains and valleys. Ups and downs keep making, that's what I put. So, dink. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>